Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, most high Christ blessed. You're watching 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Gideon, and to my right, Soldier Nate Sean. Uh, today, uh, the topic is grievous wolves. So, without no further ado, we're just going to jump into it because it's only 15 minutes. So, uh, we're going to uh, read from Ezekiel chapter 22, start at verse 25. The book of Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 25. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof, like a roaring lion raven in the prey. They have devoured souls, they have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. So the Bible said there's a conspiracy of her, of her prophets. So among Israel, there's something wrong with the prophets. What is the conspiracy? Let's go to Isaiah 28, 15. Because you go to churches, you see the churches on Sundays, you see all pastors dressing like pimps, um, having the mega churches, uh, mixed crowd. Like, I mean, it's just a, a disaster. So what is the conspiracy? Read on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. So, the pastors in those churches, they made a covenant with hell. How did they do that? By not keeping God's laws? By being in one accord with the nations? They're not separating themselves from the, other, uh, 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 from the other nations. So that's how they make a covenant with death. Thinking that if they're in accord with the powers that be, when things go off, like when Christ returns, like they're going to actually escape. I hear a pastor say he's not going to heaven broke. Like he's saving money to make it to heaven. Like, dude, what Bible are you reading? That's what I'm saying. These people have made a covenant with hell. Okay, and they made falsehood their refuge. Easter, Christmas, Sunday church, and many more. Those are lies. Oh, um, every food is clean. Just pray on it. Oh, so that means that, that, that Moabite could pray on that, that, that bat and then it should be all right. Or pray on that live rat they be eating and it's all right. How about a, 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 a human foot? Just pray on it and su sucking on them toes. No. Falsehood has been your refuge, and that is the conspiracy. They made falsehood their refuge, and they are in bed with the other nations. They are in bed with the powers that be. So there's no way they're going to stand because guess what? They did not build on the rock. Let's go back to um, Ezekiel. Because it says, there's a conspiracy of a prophet in the midst thereof like a roaring lion. Roaring lion. So if... What, what, what scripture we have for that to show you their characters? Give me First Peter's five verse eight. Hold on to Ezekiel because we're always coming back to it. So First Peter's five and eight. Let's see what that, what that's talking about when it says they are like a roaring lion. The book of First Peter's chapter five and verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Uh oh, hold on. He said, be sober, be vigilant. You gotta have your eyes open. And he can't be drunk with wine in excess or drunk with the philosophies of this world. Because why? The, your adversary, not your friend, your adversary. If I say watch out for your adversary, you better be prepared because that means what? There's an enemy hunting for you. It says for your adversary who? The devil walketh about 
seeking whom he may devour. So your adversary walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Read it again. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So when we go back to Ezekiel, it tells you there's a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst of like a roaring lion, ravening the prey. So the prophets are your adversary, the devil. What does the word devil mean? Deceiver. Who's in the pulpit deceiving you? Pastor Porkchop. Ravening the prey because you are prey to them. They don't care about your soul. Because any man who care about your soul is going to teach you, thus saith the Lord according to the law, statutes, and commandments that you have to keep in the faith of Christ. But that's not what you're being taught in church. You cannot tell me you see Valentine's Day in the Bible. You cannot tell me you see us keeping birthdays in the Bible. You cannot see that we keep Thanksgiving. All the holidays are man-made, but yet you in the church. That means what? You are following the doctrine of men, and that man does not care about your soul. Go back to um, Ezekiel. 26. 26. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. Stop. It said, her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. That's what we're talking about. You actually think the laws is done away with. Before we show you how the priests have violated the law, let's go to uh, Matthew 5, uh, 17. Just to confirm that the laws are not done away with. Because we're reading from the book of Ezekiel, you might have in your head that the laws is done away with. Okay. And hold up. You know what's funny? The exact verse I'm going to read, that's the exact verse you have in your head as to why the law is done away. We're going to use the same verse to prove to you the laws of God have not been done away with. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. So the Bible says, don't think the reason of Christ coming here was to destroy what the law says or to rewrite what the prophets says. He did not come to do away with those things. Read. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. So Christ came to fulfill the prophecies that was written about him, that he should die. You follow? But Christ kept the law. Nowhere in the Bible you're going to see here, Christ said, you can steal, you can lie, you can cheat. You're not going to see those things. So how is the law done away with? It makes no sense. Read on. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise Pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Has all been fulfilled? No. Christ have not returned yet. So it says, until all been fulfilled, not one jot, not one tittle in the law shall be passed away. So the law still stand. Next verse. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So if you are a man that's out there breaking God's laws and teaching against God's laws, you're going to be the least in the kingdom. That means you're going to die. Bar none. Pure and simple. Finish the verse. But whosoever shall, shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So whoever do and teach the laws, those are the ones that's going to be called great in heaven. So in, at what point in these verses that you see that the law is done away with? So let's go back to Ezekiel. So you can understand the conspiracy a little bit better. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. So the priests have violated God's laws. Till today they are violating God's laws. Um, let's do a simple law. Give me Deuteronomy uh, 22 and 5. The priests are violating the law. There's many laws. The Sabbaths, we're going to get to that. The feast days, we talked about that a little bit. Every day you guys wake up is breaking God's laws. And you actually think you are... What? Serving God. No way. You got gotten by grievous wolves that does, that does not care about your soul. So it's best that you take heed and come out of those places. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What the Bible says? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What pertain to a man? Pants. But in those churches, I see women with pants all the time. You follow? Neither shall a man wear women's garment. So no cross dressings. 
But is pastor speaking against those things? Um, I've, 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 I've heard many women of the churches says, uh, well, I only wear, wear pants throughout the week. Because it make my life easier. But on Sunday, not even on Saturday, on Sunday I do wear uh, um, uh, skirts. My pastor does teach that. Your pastor is still a hypocrite. Tell me if that's not a similar story. Well, I only smoke crack Monday through Saturday. But Sunday is the day of the Lord, so I'm not going to smoke crack. Does that make sense? Or I only go to the club once a month. So I don't, I'm not really a whoremonger. You, you get what I'm saying? It does not make sense. It's either you're doing it or you're not doing it. So the Bible gives you a law, but your pastor is teaching you to break that law. Why? Because he doesn't want to lose your money. You understand? Now let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Read. Really? But I suffer not a woman to teach. Stop. Don't we have women pastors in the churches? Sure. It's a conspiracy. They're ravening the prey. They don't care about you because the Bible clearly says, read it again. But I suffer not a woman to teach. But I suffer not a woman to teach. So you women pastors are a disgrace in God's eyes. Right? Nor to, us to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So when women are in the churches, they are to be silent. You follow? They cannot come in the churches wearing their pants and usurping authority over the men. That's not supposed to be so, but Pastor Porkchop is not teaching against that. Matter of fact, he make his wife second pastor. You know why? So more money can go to his house. Because he's getting a paycheck, his wife getting a paycheck, and whatever he gets on the low, in a cut under the table. That's the conspiracy, people. Now it says, go back to Ezekiel, it says, and profane mine holy things. God have holy days, people. And one of which, give me John 10, 22. We show you that Christ kept holy days. Again, we call ourselves Christians, we're supposed to be Christ followers. Read that. The book of John, chapter 10, and verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. Read. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So, feast of dedication, during winter, Christ was in the temple keeping the feast. Ask yourself this question. What feast do you keep during the winter time? You keep Christmas. Did Jesus keep Christmas? No, he did not. So you have been fooled in thinking that keeping Christmas is the right holiday. No, it's not. The right holidays are what? Hanukkah, which is the Feast of Dedication, which we just showed you in John 20, 10, 22, Christ kept. So somebody, there's a conspiracy against you to destroy you. And the conspiracy is to have you go directly against God's law while thinking that you are serving God. Now, if there's any greater conspiracy than that, I don't know what this. For you to live your whole life thinking you're serving the Lord. And when the Lord returned for him to say, depart from me, I knew you not, you workers of iniquity. Do you want to be the person to face that? Start reading your Bible. Go back to Ezekiel. Finish that verse. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. So they have made no difference between the clean and unclean. Give me Leviticus 11, verse 46 and 47. Let's see what that, what's that going into. As far as not putting any differences between clean and unclean. We don't? The book of, e the book of Leviticus, chapter 11. Where do you want to start? Verse 46 and 47. Verse 46. This is the law of the beast and of the fowl. And of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. So this is the law of the beast, to make a difference between the clean and the unclean. So a law was established by the Most High God that there is a difference between the clean and unclean. But what did your pastor say? Just pray on it. You're good. Give me verse uh, uh, 7. Let's see one thing that's unclean. Verse, that you love eating. Verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, 
yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. The swan, just to name one, is an unclean animal, which is the pig. You like eating your pigtails, your bacon. Most I say those are unclean, but your pastor does not make a difference between the clean and the unclean. Go back to Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 22, verse 26. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. And, so, ha that and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. And I am profane among them. Realize Sabbath with an S. There are many Sabbaths. It's not just Saturday, which you are profaning by keeping Sunday, but it's not the only one. Give me Leviticus 23, verse 2 and 3. There are many Sabbaths in the Bible. We're just going to give you a few examples of them. Leviticus 23, 23, verse 2 and 3. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So the feast of the Lord are holy convocation. The first day on many of them and the last day are Sabbaths. Holy convocation. Have you ever kept any feast that's written in the Bible? I think not. Read. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So you have the seventh day Sabbath and you have the feast days which are holy convocation. Read. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So these are the feasts of the Lord. When you go into Hanukkah, the first day and the last day are Sabbaths. Passover, the first day and the last day are Sabbaths. And many more. So we want to give you just a few examples. If you want to learn more, read the whole chapter 23 so you can see what that's talking about. Give me um, Revelation. Uh, eight, is it 18 and 4? Come out of her. Yeah. Read that for me. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So the Bible is warning you to come out of those churches where there's a conspiracy against you to make you think that you're serving God, but at the end of the day, Christ is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you not. So come out. With that, we're going to say shalom. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.